Hey everybody, welcome to PGL Media. My name is Patrick. I'm going to be your host for today's review on Dehancer, a plugin for DaVinci Resolve. Let's get started. Hey everybody, a disclaimer before we begin. Dehancer did reach out to me to review this product. I'm here to give an honest review. With that, let's get started. All right, everybody, we're going to Dehancer's website where you could download the free trial version of their software. Uh, these are a couple of the people that have shown off some great results of what you could get with Dehancer. Uh, if we scroll further down, there is kind of a bout. Uh, Dehancer is a plugin that's made for things like uh, non-linear applications like DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut, or Premiere. They have over 30 years of experience shooting on film and dark rooms and stuff like that. So that is their website. Check it out, it's definitely awesome. Oh, and they also have an iOS version now for your phone that supports photos and video. Uh, they just didn't update on that, uh, so I checked that out as well. We're gonna move over to DaVinci Resolve, and from here, um, I'm gonna give an example of how you could actually use Dehancer. So to get started, I'm gonna add a new node. I'm gonna scroll down to where I have my Dehancer and I'm gonna select this and apply it to this node. From here, you can choose anything like Rec 709, Rec 2020. Uh, from that, you could see just by turning that on what type of look it gives you from 709. In this case, I am using black magic, so I'm gonna be using that as my type. So in here, I'm gonna switch to black magic, 4K, and then do film. So we could see the before and after. And that's that right there, let alone is just an awesome feature where it really starts to open up its power is when you go to the profile. Uh, this shows Kodak Vision 3 250, but if we scroll to the top, we can make this look like this type of film emulation or go down here, that would be another type. You can always push and pull this to get different results. You can always reset it uh, to the right. Go further down, uh, Cine Still. Again, you could see the before and after, see what that looks like. After applying this, you do have a lot of other adjustments you can make by expand will increase or decrease the black point or the same with the highlights. There you can see in my uh, waveform how those are adjusted when I do that. Uh, now where it also opens up is when you go to something like profile and using something like Kodak 2383 print film is what most people go for. So you can always apply that. In here you could see the Cine Still 50D, or from here, one of the ones I like is the Fuji Color, or go down to um, Kodak, it's hard not to want to actually use that. Kodak Gold looks pretty good. Um, also Kodak Vision 500T is pretty popular and 500 Vision 350D um, is for daylight. And then from here, you can always change the print like we did. You can make slight adjustments. You can see how things are affected by that. So this right here is where you just kind of stylize what you prefer. Um, what you do want to do is choose the analog range limiter. So when you check that, then it won't allow this to kind of clip where film would clip if you were to kind of go any further. So you could see how things are adjusted when we apply that. 
And then down here, the color head, just think of it as like a color balance for a video. So you can always make these adjustments. This isn't working right here because you have to go a little further down and choose enable. And then when you apply this, you could see how things dramatically shift when adjusting them just like that. You could do this for any part. I don't use it personally, but you could also adjust the shadow tone, adjust the mid, and then adjust the highlights, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna just reset all these because I don't really use them. And then also here you could adjust the film grain. The big thing about film grain is how it is embedded into the video. So here, if you were to do a crazy amount, you could see how noisy this looks. And I'm gonna actually go to 200, just so you can really see it. And this right down here, you could reduce it to whatever you feel looks right. I usually prefer the film amount to be like 1.9. You can always adjust the film resolution as well. I always kind of keep it just where it's at for now. That's just where I'm at with uh, using this plugin. I do change the film type from negative to positive. I kind of like that look. So you could always adjust that as well. And then there's the subtleties. I'm gonna restore this back to, again, you can make certain adjustments here. We have analog on the film type. And then we have some like halation. If you don't know what that is, if you apply it, you don't really see anything here. There's a skyline that's in red. And that's what halation does is it adds a characteristic of film, kind of this slight uh, red mark across highlights. Um, if you do want to make it more distinct, you could see how this amplifier will bring it up. And then also you could just, again, play with different settings, but amplifier will kind of bring it up. And then this source limiter will also bring it out as well. So if you want just a crazy look with that, um, you can always apply that and you can see the before and after with that. So I'm gonna just restore the amplifier. I'm kind of fine where it is. You also have bloom, another characteristic of film where you could adjust the highlights with this. And this is not doing much right here. If you want to make this kind of shine, you're gonna to have to take this uh, save lights and uh, bring that up. And then this will have more of a dreamy effect to it. Almost like if you're to use like a black mist filter uh, to your overall um, video. So you can see how this kind of highlights things. Kind of cool look, almost like Tron. If you wanted that to look kind of crazy looking like that. so. Some people really like that look. All right, last thing we're gonna do, this is about as much as I'll do, is you can always apply a vignette to it. And from that, you can make adjustments either where it gets more of like you're in a tunnel or if you're like at a wedding where you want things to be really bright on the outer edges uh, to kind of bring it more to life. Um, things like Film Breathe or Gate Weaver uh, are just things that uh, happen with the projector and the way it handles film. I don't really use them, so I'm not gonna go over that. And then you do have something called false color. So if you do use false color, this will help you see where things are overexposed or underexposed or correctly exposed. And then the last couple things, we do have output, total impact, how much you want this to apply to the original. So it's pretty much just making it more translucent so it's not as strong in the overall look of this. And then also you can do a LUT generator for this and export the LUT if you think that's a really cool look. Let's take a look at three different cameras and the results we get when using Dehancer.
All right, everybody, let's wrap this up. With everything we went over, I would definitely recommend this product to friends and family. I definitely think it delivers in a variety of aspects. So with that, thanks for hanging out with me. My name's Patrick. We'll see you in the next one.